Welcome to the second lesson on logic in honors geometry. We're going to be analyzing conditional statements. And conditional statements are used quite a bit in geometry. We're about to start using postulates, theorems, and definitions. These are all basically made of conditional statements. Conditional statement is an if-then statement. So our essential question for this lesson is, how do I write and interpret different types of conditional statements to help me analyze situations and to become a better problem solver? Now, a conditional statement is a logical statement that has two parts, a hypothesis and a conclusion. Now, in geometry, we use hypothesis in a totally different meaning than it is used in science. So hypothesis that we talk about here, just forget everything that you use it for in, geom in science because this is totally different. We've got a new definition that will be used in geometry. So a conditional is an if-then statement and generally we have the if written and the then written. Sometimes they're just implied but that can still be a conditional statement, but when they're written, it is in the if-then form. The hypothesis is what follows the if statement. It's generally in the beginning, but it does not have to be in the beginning. Conclusion is what follows the then. A lot of times the then is going to be implied. Oh, and you need to be copying all of these onto your vocabulary sheet. So you may need to pause at some point to get these copied. And then negation, that's the opposite of the original statement. And when you're negating something, we can use the symbol a little tilde to indicate negation. So sometimes we'll use symbolic forms for things. It makes it easier to deal with just the logic. And we'll do that in the next day or so. So converse. This is where I switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. So what I take, I take what's after the then, move it to after the if. Take what's after the if, move it to after the then. Then I need to make sure my grammar is correct because if my conclusion has an it in it, I don't move the it to the beginning of the sentence. Inverse is where I negate both the hypothesis and conclusion. I either put a not in each one or remove a not. Contrapositive is where I'm doing both inverse and converse. I'm switching the order and negating both of them. Two statements are said to be equivalent if they have the same truth value. In other words, they're both true or both false. Just a definition coming back to this. Perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect to form a right angle. And then the biconditional statement is where I take the conditional and its converse, combine them together, and put it if and only if in the middle of it. And I abbreviate if and only if with IFF. Now, getting to some symbolic notation. A lot of times I'll let P stand for the hypothesis. So in this case, the hypothesis is the angle is a right angle. And Q, I let be the conclusion. And in this case, the measure of an angle is 90 degrees. So if I want to write that as a conditional, I have if then, if P, then Q, or P implies Q. And then putting it into words, if an angle is a right angle, then its measure is 90 degrees. Now my converse, this is why we like to use 
symbolic logic. You can see how I've switched these around or switched them here. If Q then P and putting it into words if the measure of the angle is 90 degrees then the angle is a right angle. I've taken the conclusion made it the hypothesis, made the original hypothesis has become the conclusion. Inverse I put a not in or I negate it. So if not P then not Q or if not P implies not Q putting it into words. If an angle is not a right angle then its measure is not 90 degrees. Contrapositive. This is where I take both the converse, I switch it, and the inverse, and I negate it. So I have if not Q, then not P, or not Q implies not P. And putting this into words, if the measure of an angle is not 90 degrees, then the angle is not a right angle. And then the biconditional, this is where I remove the if from the beginning of the sentence, remove the then, and put in the center of it, if and only if. And I have a bidirectional implies here, so P if and only if Q. Now I can get a biconditional only if the conditional is true and the converse is true. If one of those is false, then I can't make it into a biconditional. And so here, an angle is right angle if and only if its measure is 90 degrees. Now let's go back and put this information on the notes, on the vocabulary notes. So, conditional statement, that's my P implies Q, or if P then Q. Okay, hypothesis is my P. Conclusion is my Q. Negation, that's my tilde, where I put the not P, indicating I'm negating it. Converse, this is where I take my conclusion, Q, and imply my original hypothesis, I've switched the order. Inverse, I keep the same order, but I negate it. So it's not P implies not Q. Contrapositive, I both switch it and negate it. So I've not Q implies not P. In the biconditional, I write it with the double-ended arrow, meaning it goes both directions, P if and only if Q. No. So here where you have some examples using symbolic notation, I'm going to let P be the cars running, Q be the key is in the ignition. So I want to write the conditional statement P implies Q in words. So I take my hypothesis and put an if in front of it. If the car is running, then I take my conclusion, put a then in front of it. The key is in the ignition. I want to take converse. I take my conclusion put that after the if, take my hypothesis, put that after the then. That's my converse. Inverse, I take my hypothesis, negate it, put the not in there. Take the conclusion, negate it, put the not in there. So if the car is not running, then the key is not in the ignition. And contrapositive, I'm both switching it and negating it. So 
So if the key is not in the ignition, then the car is not running. Now, if I look at whether or not these are true or not, if I assume that I have a car where the key has to be in the ignition, as opposed to one where I just have the, the little fob that has to be in the car to start it, then this is going to be true. If the car is running, then the key is in the ignition. That's going to be true. Now, if the key is in the ignition, then the car is running. Not necessarily true. I may have put the key in the ignition, but not gotten around to starting it. So that's false. And then if the car is not running, the key is not in the ignition. Same reason here. I may have put the key in the ignition, but not started. So that's false. Contrapositive. If the key is not in the ignition, then the car is not running. That's going to be true. And the conditional and contrapositive will always have the same truth value. And kind of last thing we're hitting here, good definitions. They're going to be reversible, use clear terms, and are going to be precise. When I say reversible, it means I can write it as a biconditional. That means the original conditional and its converse are both true. I'm going to use clear terms. I'm not going to use things like blue or pretty. Not, and I'm going to be precise. I'm not going to use several or large. I'm going to, if it needs a numeric value, I'll use something like three or four, depending on what applies. So I want to show that this definition of a triangle is reversible, and then I'll write it as a true conditional. So that means that both the original conditional and converse are true. But I'm given a definition without an if or then in it. A triangle is a polygon with exactly three sides. So first thing I need to do is make it into a conditional. So I'm going to make it into a conditional. If a polygon is a triangle, then it has exactly three sides. That's going to be true. Take my converse. I take what's here, move it to the beginning. But you notice how this it now becomes a polygon. If a polygon has exactly three sides, then it is a triangle. So if I read this, if it has exactly three sides, then a polygon is a triangle. I don't know what the it is referring to. I need to have my grammar correct when I'm doing this. Now, because both statements are true, I can combine it to form a biconditional, which will be a polygon is a triangle if and only if it has exactly three sides. And I'll leave you with one final thing here. This came from the S. Maryland column in Parade Magazine. The questioner asked, what is the most important thing a person can do to improve his or her critical thinking skills? And Maryland's reply was, Study logic. Without a sound foundation and the principles of reasoning, you will be less able to understand your world, and the ramifications of this will ripple through everything from work to play. Even worse, you won't realize what you're missing. Thank you, and good night.